Hi everyone. Uh, let's go back to your digital notebook. I hope you've had a chance to fill out the chart on the second page using the Discovery Ad Collage Board. Um, and you've had a chance to explore prokaryotic cells a little bit more and then compare those to eukaryotes, which we've been talking about, those plant and animal cells. So let's look at this page. It should be the third page in your notebook. And we've got a good picture here of a prokaryotic cell and some parts of that cell. Um, and I've, I've actually put some descriptions. I tried to place them on top of that cell part. So you could do, you could make a copy of this slide if you want to and fill out one uh, and leave one like this so that you could use it as a study tool maybe. Remember, your notebook is up to you, so do what you, do what you would like to do with your notebook. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about each one of these parts and just drag it down to its name. So I'll start with um, our prokaryote here. I've got this description, the region in the cell where you can find the concentration of DNA. So uh, if you look at this cell, it's actually in here in the middle looks like a bunch of squiggly lines. It's a chromosome, so DNA that's been coiled up. And you could take that chromosome out of this, uh, this prokaryotic cell and stretch it out, and it would be um, one circular chromosome. That, in a eukaryote, right, we said the DNA was in the nucleus, so it was surrounded by a membrane, but not in this case, not with prokaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells are a lot less complex they don't have those membrane-bound organelles. And now we see that here with the DNA. The DNA is just free-floating, but it's coiled up in a region we call the nucleoid. So if you see nucleoid, don't get confused. Oops, don't get confused. It's not the nucleus. It doesn't have a membrane around it. It's just the reason where you can find the DNA, the one circular chromosome that's in prokaryotes. Okay, so also related to DNA, up here. Uh, this is about these little squiggly, they're also red, they're little squiggly <laughs> lines it looks like. Those are also small circular pieces of DNA and they are called plasmids. So they're free floating out in the cytoplasm. They will become very important when we talk about biotechnology. Bacteria will take plasmids up from the environment and it's an easy-ish way for scientists to get genes that don't belong to the bacteria inside of the bacteria. So plasmids are small pieces of DNA that are just free floating out there in the, in the plasma membrane or in the cytoplasm, excuse me. So next, let's talk about the surrounding of this cell and every cell. So no matter what, if it's a cell, it has a cell membrane or a plasma membrane. And that plasma membrane is selectively permeable. It regulates what enters and helps regulate what enters and leaves the cell. And prokaryotes have those too. Bacteria have those as well. Next, on the outside of the plasma membrane, prokaryotes, bacteria cells, also have a cell wall. And the, that cell wall is important to help maintain shape, just like the plant cell, but also to keep that uh, prokaryote or keep that bacteria from bursting when it takes up uh, too much water or water itself. So think about multicellular organisms. Those are uh, multicellular organisms are always eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotes are always unicellular. They are always just one organism, one cell. So that cell wall is important to bacteria to help keep its shape and keep it from bursting. Last here, uh, this tail-like structure on the bacteria or the prokaryote is called a flagella. So that's probably pretty obvious. That's for movement or locomotion. And bacteria could use that to move toward nutrients. Some might need to move towards light. Um, some 
might use that to move away from toxins. So that's actually an adaptation, a characteristic that helps it survive in its environment for that bacteria to move. Okay, so make sure you've got that in your notebook and move to the next page where you are going to uh, look at a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. I want you to find things that are similar and things that are different and type your answer in that box. After you've done that, I want you to move down to this Venn diagram and drag these words where they belong on the Venn diagram comparing prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So I'm going to have you pause the video, do those two things, and then come back and we will fill out this Venn diagram together. Okay, so pause your video. Welcome back. You should have completed uh, typing your answer into this box, comparing those two cells, prokaryotic, prokaryotic side prokaryotic cell on the right hand side and eukaryotic cell on the left hand side and then tried out this Venn diagram. So let's go through and do this Venn diagram together and check yourself. So I'll just start with the top. Plasma membrane. Like I normally say, if it's a cell, it has a membrane. So plasma membrane or cell membrane goes in the middle here. Nucleus. So a nucleus is a membrane that surrounds DNA. So the nucleus is only going to go on the eukaryotic side. There's the big, a big difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes do not have membrane-bound organelles. Mitochondria is a membrane-bound organelle. So that's going to stay on that eukaryotic side with the nucleus. Cell wall, so I'm going to put this in the middle. Prokaryotes can have a cell wall and eukaryotes can have a cell wall. That doesn't mean they all have cell walls, right? Animal cells don't have a cell wall, but it could be found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Chloroplast, chloroplast kind of goes over here with nucleus and mitochondria. That's an organelle that has a membrane, so it's going to belong on the eukaryotic side. Free-floating DNA. So DNA that's free-floating in the cytoplasm, not inside of a nucleus. We know that goes over here with prokaryote. And ribosomes. So this one sometimes tri trips students up because they think about it as an organelle. But ribosomes are not membrane-bound organelles. They um, come together and then are broken apart as proteins are being made. So I like to tell students to remember, ribosomes are where proteins are made. The instructions for proteins come from DNA. So if it has DNA, it has ribosomes. Larger and smaller. So in your uh, learning targets, you needed to be able to decipher the uh, relative size of prokaryotes and prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So relative to one another, eukaryotes are larger and prokaryotes are smaller. Okay, much smaller as we saw in the very first picture. And then more complex. That's pretty obvious usually. The one with all the organelles and all the parts is going to be more complex. So make sure you've got this filled out in your digital notebook. The last uh, two slides in Nearpod, um, a little quiz for you to check yourself and make sure you've got this content, and then your assignment to turn into Canvas. As always, please reach out with questions, and I will talk to you guys the next time.